Carrie from Connecticut asks, do you trust the mainstream media? <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I trust the Internet a lot more. There are five giant multinational corporations who control virtually all 14,000 radio stations in America, all 5,000 television stations, 80% of our newspapers, all of our billboards, and most of the large internet content providers. So there are five guys who are deciding what we hear as news and information. 11% of Americans now read papers, where you still can get some relevant news occasionally, but the rest of us get our news primarily from the traditional corporate-owned media, which have no ideology except for their own pocketbooks. And that ideology is almost always coterminous with the ideology of the party in power, but particularly the Republican Party. Because, you know, they're, they, they want all these consolidations, corporate, they're supporting these corporate consolidations. These are huge companies that have all kinds of subsidiaries that are looking for licensing deals and, and consolidation, you know, uh, concessions from the government, and they're not going to say something that offends them. Now, is Charlie Sheehan ranting like a lunatic about the September 11th attacks? It is impossible for a building to fall the way it fell without explosives being involved. World Trade Center 7. You're not supposed to do that when you're a professional broadcaster. Stop asking me to raise this ridiculous topic on the show and start asking your doctor if Paxil is right for you. <laughs> she is now a hater. The scholars for 9-11 Truth. These are the worst, most fringe, kookiest, discredited academic crackpots. Those who want to examine life don't go in for journalism because they're not allowed to. So they've got to be very careful. They have to think about tenure if they're at a university. They've got to think about, you know, the publisher and advertiser. This devolution of the American press began in 1988 when Ronald Reagan abolished the Fairness Doctrine. We were stunned uh, because up until that point, we were allowed to do legitimate news. And suddenly we were ordered from the top to carry propaganda, carry Republican right-wing propaganda. We expect every American to support our military, and if they can't do that, to shut up. The Iraq regime continues to possess and conceal some of the most lethal weapons ever devised. We will in fact find uh, uh, weapons. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad. And, and we believe he has in fact reconstituted nuclear weapons. The regime is seeking a nuclear bomb. I don't know anybody that I can think of who has contended that the Iraqis had nuclear weapons. Of course, it was information that was mistaken. You know, you start to accuse your own government of murder, you start to sympathize with the enemy, Iran. In 2004, there was a survey done, it was a national survey. 70% of the people said that they believed that Saddam Hussein had bombed the World Trade Center. 70% believed that weapons of mass destruction had been found in Iraq. 65% said that they believed that the American invasion of Iraq was strongly supported on the Muslim street among Iraq's Muslim neighbors and by our traditional allies in Europe, which of course all of that is wrong. Now they say, well, most of the real news that uh, the people know about, they get from the satirizing of it that Stewart does, and very funny he is too. He never said he knew where they were. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south, and north somewhere. The only way that you can get foreign news in this country is if you go to BBC. And, you know, that's why Americans, we're supposed to be the leader of the free world, of the entire world. And yet, you know, we have no idea what's happening in other cultures or other countries. Whether it's CNN or CBS or NBC, it's all fiction. The people making this stuff, junk know that. The viewers suspect it. But where are they going to turn to? Do you think actor Charlie Sheen will hurt his career by narrating a 9-11 conspiracy film? Again, I was on television saying that bin Laden's a CIA asset and looks like he'll attack New York saying, call Washington, tell him to call off the attack. Are you of the opinion that there was an aspect of inside job to 9-11 within the U.S. government? There's that possibility. The evidence points at it. And why is it not being investigated? 
why isn't the WMD story being investigated? Why isn't why hasn't anybody been held accountable for 9/11? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, why has there been no change of command? Why has there been no political repercussions? presidential elections 2000-2004 were stolen and the New York Times would not review the book written about it by Congressman Conyers nor Washington Post nor the Wall Street Journal the great instruments of uh, news were silent your administration continues to make the use of video news releases which are prepackaged news stories sent to television stations fully aware that some or many of these stations will air them without any disclaimer that they are produced by the government. Comptroller General of the United States this week said that raises ethical questions. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? Uh, There there is a Justice Department opinion that says these, um, these pieces are within the law so long as they're based upon facts, not advocacy. Sinclair is the largest television network in our country. It's run by a former pornographer who requires all 75 of his local affiliate stations to take a pledge that they will not report critically about this president, about the war in Iraq, or a number of other issues. I've been around the ruling class all my life, and I've been quite aware of their total contempt for the people of the country. This tube can make or break presidents, popes, prime ministers. This tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world. And woe is us if it ever falls into the hands of the wrong people. Congress saw what Hitler had done in Europe and the other fascist governments had done where they had allowed these corporate consolidations and they had given these contracts and special favors to the media and they had co-opted the media and got them on their side and and so that anybody who criticized them was either muzzled or was branded as you know as as unpatriotic. Oh, 9-11 was an inside job. Oh, get a life. I think these demonstrators are all into restroom gay sex. <laughs> I don't know, communist group, I don't know who the hell they are. But this anarchist group came forward. They really are the one of the least attractive groups of demonstrators I've ever seen. The local stations ought to, if there's a deep concern about that, ought to tell their viewers what they're watching. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. American people are today the best entertained and the least informed people on the face of the earth. The principal problem with democracy, there's two big failures. One is all the corporate money that's going into our election process. And the second failure is that we have a negligent and indolent press in this country that has simply let down American democracy. So turn off your television sets, turn them off now, turn them off right now, turn them off and leave them off, turn them off right in the middle of the street.